Uh, Dad and I was driving up from Connor Creek over the Albion Summit going up the hill and the big fill up there is on what's known as Blacksmith. Below the fill and down in the level ground there was quite a little settlement at one time and people were there, several buildings and uh, the, a stagecoach stop. And leaving there, going up the hill, is four, in a soft spot of the, out in the sagebrush, is four of the old trails side by side. Stagecoach trails are going to Albion. And Fred Otley, the old patriarch of the church here years ago, drove one of those stagecoaches from Kelton to Albion. But anyway, uh, this... Uh, Four men on horseback, Crandall Eames, I remember him. Cal Williams, I remember when he came to see Father. Ted King, uh, you knew Ted. And Descendant and Chick McKnight. Um, but anyway, something I have that you might, should have when some of the Mormon battalion guys that returning from California and it, they were maybe some of the last ones coming this way and they would have been really instrumental in Sutter and the gold discoveries a bunch of Mormon battalion men and somewhere between California out here in Nevada I think it was they met a man named Hensley and Hensley was a merchant. He was quite a businessman, and he'd left Salt Lake, headed for California, I think with 70 pack mules and 10 hired men taking a, a bunch of merchandise from Salt Lake to California for sale. And out in Nevada somewhere, he met this group of Mormon battalion guys coming home. And he said, now when you get to the city rocks up here, there by the twin sisters, watch for my tracks that heads towards what now we'd call Stravel. He said, don't go the northern route that would take you down Raft River to Fort Hall, and then south to Salt Lake. He said, if you can find my tracks there at the twin sisters, follow them. And Indeed, there was a trail to follow, but that group of Mormon battalion guys said they took the first wagon that had ever gone that route down there. And have you ever read that report, the diaries of those Mormon battalion guys trying to get home? Some of them I have. Uh, Henry Bigler and others. Mm -hmm. Oh, Henry Bigler had a daughter that married a guy named Henry Lamont Wickle. And then later there was another Henry Lamont Wickle. Mm -hmm. And uh, they were the beginning of the Wickle family here at Connor Creek now. That was one of the big, and the Biglers Wells Hepworth and Orton Wickle and several of those guys claimed relationship to the Biglers. And that's where they, I don't know how Uncle Wells Hepworth fit into the deal, but that's how they, uh, the Wickles and the Biglers got into this country. One of Biglers' daughters married a Wickle early. Did any of the other Biglers live there besides her? Well, you know, there's Biglers always been in the country. Uh, Bud Bigler, I can't remember what his first name was, but a relation of Uncle Wells Heppers used to come and help Uncle Wells put up his hay. And I slept with Bud Bigler because I was helping put up hay too. A World War II veteran that, that saw plenty of problems. 
Arnold Bigler was his name. So what do you remember about Cal Williams? Uh, Cal Williams, <clears throat> I only remember seeing him for a time or two, but he came here and him and my dad talked of an old saddle that father had. <clears throat> dad called the saddle a Snyder. I have pictures of it. And uh, Cal Williams took that saddle to rebuild it. And then Cal didn't live long after that. What did he die of, do you know? Well, no, not for sure. But uh, Cal Williams was full of stories. He said one time, him and another guy roping wild horses, I believe, and the guy with Cal had his lariat tied hard and fast to the saddle horn, and uh, the horse fell or bucked that guy off, and he throwed the rope onto the ground, and then the horse was running away, and that man got caught in the in the lariat in the loop, and uh, Cal said the horse would have drug him to death, and who who the horse was dragging I do not know, but. Cal Williams said he seen it happen and he got in there and roped the horse and got the guy loose from his own lariat rope. But Cal told me that him and another guy somewhere and it was really cold when they were riding the fences late early winter, late fall, early winter, hunting for stray cattle. And Cal said he rode out on a ridge and looked down into the gully below him and there his buddy was had roped a wild horse and when that horse hit the end of the rope it jerked the saddle right off the horse the man was riding and uh, Cal said the guy stayed with his saddle just hanging on to it the horse dragging him and he said he finally turned the saddle upside down and riding it, digging the horn into the earth. And he, he choked that horse down till the horse couldn't drag him no more. And Cal said he, he sat up on the hill and there that guy was down there on his saddle in trouble. Because if he gave up on the saddle, then the horse would go again. Cal said he built him a little fire. Cal built him a little fire. Got nice and warm and then it was getting late so he thought he'd better go help his buddy. And he said he rode his horse down to his buddy and got off to help him. And when Cal got involved trying to help hold that saddle and the lariat, the guy went and got on Cal's saddle horse and went home. <laughs> Cal said it was a long ways home. He said either he got out of the mess and got that saddle on that wild horse, or he walked home. He said he rode that horse home <laughs> before morning. <laughs> but it was a big pleasure to sit there and watch the guy fight with that horse. <laughs> The guy he, got even with him. He must have had a way with horses. Stan was telling me how he got a horse and would just go out and rope it and then ride it. Well, um, her, uh, Grandpa Kimber from Grouse Creek. What was his? At Winford. Winford Kimber from Grouse Creek said he was at. Uh, uh, big ranch over here, Simpers, at the Simpers Ranch. And uh, Cal Williams drove a, a wild horse into the trail. And Winford said he was just a little boy, Winford was, 
but Cal Williams told him, no, when, when I get on that horse, you open the gate and let us out. And Cal took his saddle and his rigging off of the horse he was riding, put it on the wild horse, and got on, and Winford opened the gate, and the horse missed the gate and hit the gate post and knocked the horse down. But he said when the horse got up, Cal Williams was on him, headed across the desert. Cal had him a brand new horse, and he had just crailed him out of a wild. Oh boy, that would take some horsemanship, wouldn't it? Well, there are a couple of stories. <laughs>